Hey what's up guys, my name is Achono and today we're going to talk about linking. So what is linking? What does the C++ linker actually do? Linking is a process that we go through when we go from our source C++ files to our actual executable binary. So the first stage is actually compiling our source files and I actually made an entire video on that so go check that out. Link in the description below. Once we've compiled our files, we need to go through a process called linking. Now the primary focus of linking is to find where each symbol and function is and link them together. Remember, each file is compiled into a separate object file as a translation unit, and they have no relation to each other. Those files can't actually interact. So if we decide to split our program across multiple C++ files, which is of course very common, we need a way to actually link those files together into one program. And that is the primary purpose of what the linker does. Even if you don't have functions in external files, like for example, you've written your entire program in one file, the application still needs to know where the entry point is. So in other words, where the main function is. So that when you actually run your application, the C runtime library can say, hey, here's the main function. I'm gonna jump there and start executing code from there. And that is effectively what starts your application. So it still needs to link the main function and everything like that, even if you don't have other files. The best way to explain this is by showing some examples. So let's jump over and take a look. So here in Visual Studio, we've got a very simple project that just contains one source file, math.cpp. And inside there, we have two functions, log and multiply. The multiply function actually calls the log function, prints out the word multiply to the console, and then returns a times b. Pretty simple stuff, however this isn't an actual application since of course it doesn't contain a main function. The first thing that you have to realize is that there are those two stages of compilation, right? There's compiling and there's linking, and there's actually a way that you can differentiate between the two in Visual Studio. If you press Control F7 or if you press the compile button, only compilation will happen. No linking will ever happen. However, if you build your project or if you hit F5 to run your project, it will actually compile and then link. So if I just hit Control F7, you'll see that I actually get no errors. Everything's fine because the compilation was successful. It generated that math.obj file, the object file, and everything's great. However, if I right click on my project and hit build, you'll see that I actually get a linking error entry point must be defined. And again, that's because I'm missing my entry point, my main function. So because our compilation is divided into those two stages, compiling and linking, we actually get different types of error messages associated with each stage. If I make a syntax error, for example, which of course is something the compiler has to deal with, if I compile my code, you'll see that it tells me that I actually get an error, which is called C2143. And then it says syntax error, of course. So this is the error code for this type of error. And you'll note that it actually starts with the letter C. This tells us that it's an error that occurred in the compiling stage. If I fix that and then build my entire project, You'll see the error code listed here begins with the letters L and K, which of course stands for link. And it even tells us over here that this happened during the link stage. It's really important that you know what kind of error you get, whether it's a compiling error or a linking error, because of course you need to know that so that you can fix it properly. So in this case, we get an error which tells us the entry point must be defined. Again, that is because we are compiling this as an application. If we go to our properties and we take a look at what configuration type we have set here, you'll see it is set to application.exe and every exe file has to have some kind of entry point. If we go over here into the linker settings and into advanced, you'll actually see that we can specify a custom entry point. The entry point doesn't have to be the main function. There just has to be an entry point. Now, normally it is the main function and for pretty much anything you do, it probably will be the main function. But just so you know, entry point doesn't necessarily have to be a function called main. It can be really anything. So if we back out of here and actually write that main function, I'll just write int main and then I'll build my project again, you'll see that we no longer get that linking error and that we were successfully able to generate that exe file. All right, so now that we've established that, let's go ahead and print out the value of that multiply function. So we'll multiply five and eight together. So what we should see is this message being logged and then the value 40 being printed. Let's also add a c in .get so that our console doesn't close immediately. Then I'll just click on this local Windows debugger button to run this. As you can see, we get multiply and 40. So our application seems to be running correctly. Great. Now suppose I had these in multiple files. For example, this log doesn't really need to be in this math file because of course this just logs a message. So why don't I have a separate file that actually contains all of my logging related functions? I'm gonna right click on source files and add a new C++ file called log. 
log.cpp and then I'll click add. I'm going to grab that log function from here and move it into my log.cpp file. If I go back to math.cpp and try and compile this code, I'll get an error and you'll know that this is a compile error because the error code begins with letter C, telling me that log is not found because this file has no knowledge that a function called log exists at all. So we'll go ahead and grab this first line of the log function, which is the signature, and we'll add this so that we have a declaration of the log function in this math.zbp file. I'll hit control F7 and you can see that compiling worked. Now let's go ahead and build our entire project. We get several errors here, compile errors, telling us that C out is not found because we need to actually include IO stream. Once we've done that, let's build our entire project. All right, great, it seemed to work successfully. Now let's take a look at one type of linking error that we might get. This one's called unresolved external symbol. And this is what happens when the linker can't find something that it needs. So we'll go back over here and in the log file, I'm going to change this to say something else. For example, I'm just going to add an R here so that we say logger. If I go back to math.cpp, I've still left my declaration as log, so it still does expect the function to be called log. So this file will still compile, of course, because this does no linking. So all it's doing is checking to make sure everything here compiles correctly. It believes that there is a log function somewhere, but it's going to be the job of the linking stage to actually find that log function. So if I build my entire project now, you'll see we actually get an error. This is a linking error because it, you can see that it begins with the LNK letters and the error says unresolved external symbol. Now it tells us exactly what symbol is missing. It's that log function. It even tells us where we reference it, that we're referencing it in a function called multiply. So here it is in multiply, we're calling log and it cannot actually find which function to link it to. So of course it has to give us an error because when we land on that code at runtime, what is it supposed to do when it tries to call the log function? It doesn't know where the log function is. Now, if I go over here and I comment out this log function so that we actually never call it, if I try and build this, we get no errors. The reason this happens is because I never call the log function. So the linker doesn't have to link this function call to actually call the log function because we never called the log function. Another interesting note is that if I do call the log function here in multiply, however, I comment this line out so that I never call multiply, which in turn never calls log. If I build my project now, you'll see that I still get a linking error. And you might be like, what? But why is that happening? I'm not calling multiply anywhere. Why is it complaining about a linking error? Shouldn't it have just removed the function entirely since it's essentially dead code that's never used? Wrong because whilst we're not using the multiply function in this file, we actually could technically use it in another file. And so the linker does actually need to link that. If we could somehow tell the compiler that, hey, this function multiply, I'm only ever gonna use it inside this file, then of course, we could remove that linking necessity since if multiply is never called, it never needs to call log. Oh wait, there is a way we could do that. If we come over here and write the word static in front of multiply, that basically means that this multiply function is only declared for this translation unit, which is this math.cpp file in our case. And since multiply is never called inside this file, if I build, we won't get any linking errors. If I bring back my comment though, and then I build, of course we will get a linking error. In this case, we actually ended up modifying the name of the function. However, it's not just the name of the function that matters. If I bring back this function, I'll call it log again. I'll build my project. We won't get any errors. But then I, for example, change the return type to be int, and then I'll just return zero or something like that. If I build my project now, you'll see that we get an error because in math.cpp, we specify that this log function was a void function. And so because of that, it's going to look for a function called log that returns void and also takes in this one parameter. If I go back to log and I might change this back to void, get rid of this return zero and build it, Everything works fine, but then I might add another parameter. For example, the level. If I now build this, we'll get a linking error once again, because the log function that it expects does not have another parameter. You'll see if we go down here into the linking error message, it actually expects a function which returns void, which has this calling convention. It's called log, and it has to have just one parameter, which is a const char pointer. That's it. If it cannot find exactly that, then you're gonna get a linking error. Let's go back over here to our log file and just remove this level so that our program works again. And if I build it, of course, we shouldn't get any linking errors. Great, okay, so the other type of linking error that's pretty common is when we have duplicate symbols. 
So in other words, we have functions or variables which have the same name and the same signature. So two identically named functions which have the same return value and the same parameters. If that happens, we're in trouble. The reason we're in trouble is because the linker doesn't know which one to link to, it's ambiguous. So back in our code, if I was, for example, to write another version of this function, so I'll just literally copy and paste this function and try and build my code, you'll note that we actually get a compiler error because this already has a body and the compiler can kind of tell us that, yeah, okay, since I'm compiling this file, I can obviously see that you've made a mistake. This code just isn't valid. So this is an example of having duplicate symbols where the compiler can actually save us because this all happens in one file and no linking actually needs to happen to see that we've got an error. However, if I was to move this into a different file, for example, I'll move it back into our math file right over here. So we still have our declaration. I can leave that there. That's fine. That's just a declaration. We only have one definition of log in this file, so it's not going to give us a compiling error. If I hit control F7 just to compile this, you can see it's totally fine. But now if I build, we get a linking error. And you can see that the one we get, it tells us that we have this log function already defined in log.obj. One or more multiply defined symbols found. So in this case, the linker doesn't know which log function to link to. Does it link to the one in math.cpp or does it link to the one in log.cpp? It doesn't know. Now you might think that this type of error is not something that would happen often and that you're smarter than that. However, this can creep up on you, so I'll show you a few ways as to how that can happen. All right, firstly, let's just remove this extra log definition we have here so that our project builds successfully. Now let's create a header file. I'm gonna right click on header files, select add new item. It's gonna be a header file. I'm going to call this file log.h and click add. Now inside here, I'm going to grab this log function and make sure that I'm declaring it inside this header file. If I go back to log cpp, I'll write some kind of other function, for example, init log that's just going to call the log function and say that it's initialized the log. Of course, if we try and compile now, we're going to get an error because we need that log function. So I'll include log. Back over here in math.cpp, instead of having this declaration here, I'm also going to include log. So great, we're calling the log function from both the multiply function inside the math.cpp file as well as the init log inside the log.cpp file. It doesn't really matter that I'm not calling this function, so don't worry about that. I'm just gonna build my project. Okay, check this out. I get an error telling me that log is already defined in log.obj, so we get a one or more multiply defined symbols found. So we're getting a duplicate symbols error message. However, you can see that I've really only got one definition of log. It's inside this log.h file. Why is it complaining about multiple symbols? Now this comes back to how the include statement works. Remember, when we include a header file, we're just taking the contents of that header file and putting it where our include statement is. So what's actually happened is it's taken this log function, popped it over here like so into log.cpp and then also over here. And now you can see that we of course do have two log functions. So how do we fix this? Well, we've got a few options here. If we undo all of this so that we're including log again, we could mark this log function as static. That means that the linking that should happen to this log function should only be internal, which means that this log function, when it gets included into log.cpp and math.cpp, is going to be just internal to this file, kind of like what we did with multiply. So basically log and math will have their own versions of this function called log, and it won't be visible to any other object files. So if we just compile this now, you'll see that we won't get any linking errors. Another thing that we could do to this is make it inline. Of course, inline just means that it's going to take our actual function body and replace the call with it. So in this case, this log initialized log would just become that. So if we were to do something like that and build, you'll see that we get no errors either. Now there's one other way that we could fix this and that's probably what I would do in this situation. And that is just move the definition of this into one translation unit. Because right now what's happening is this log function is being included in two translation units, log.cpp and math.cpp. That's what's causing the error in the first place. So we could move it into a third translation unit or we could put this log definition into one of these existing translation units. Since this function is called log and it's related to logging, I'm actually going to put it into log.cpp. So I'll grab this function, I'll copy it into log.cpp, I'll get rid of the inline, and then I'll come back to my log.h and just leave the declaration here, again without the inline of course. So now this header file just has the declaration for log, the actual function to link to is included inside log.cpp once in one translation unit in our project, and then main will call that. So if I build this, we get no linking errors and our project was able to be linked successfully. 
So that's it. That's pretty much a quick crash course on linking and how linking works. Remember, at the end of the day, the linker needs to take all of our object files that were generated during compilation and link them all together. It will also pull in any other libraries that we may be using. For example, the C runtime library, the C++ standard library, our platform APIs if necessary, and a whole lot of other stuff. It's very common to be linking from many different places. There's also different types of linking. We have static linking and we have dynamic linking, but I'll save that for another video. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you really like like this video you can support me on Patreon. That'll help me make more of these videos. And by doing so you'll also get access to early drafts of videos and be involved in the planning process. But as always, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Fool.